As investors become speculators and casino gamblers become stock speculators, more euphoria has made its way into the financial system. We are seeing a huge uptake in equities, whether through direct stock purchases or through an ETF. More people have been using margin than ever before. The market has become a place for people to leverage as much as possible, simply believing that nothing bad could ever happen. Not wise. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you today. I've got an interesting video. We're going to talk about margin debt we're going to talk about leveraged stocks or ETF specifically that people are using today they don't really know what they're doing exactly but the belief is that the stock market always goes up so as long as they're investing things that are supposed to move in that direction they will do well and of course as you've seen in 2020 after March many of them have done very well so it's a reinforcing belief that's taking place they don't know what happened before that they don't understand the the ups and downs and cycles and everything that has to do with the actual markets but they've put their money in and they've been using things that have made it really easy like Robinhood for instance where you could see so many people that have never traded a stock in their life are now getting into things like options and so on so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about uh, the market systems in general I want to show you indicators related to them that are so key today and let me just tell you right off the bat they are at the highest percentile we've seen uh, historically not a good sign as well but the market continues to rise and rise and rise and then if i have some time i want to get into some economic factors as well a lot to cover let's get into it right away this was a lengthy article out of the Wall Street Journal and it's talking about different examples where people have been putting their money in, taking huge risks. This individual they're showing right here who's driving a Tesla, wearing a shirt that says Tesla to Mars, and it might be hard to see, but essentially the chart going upward. And that's what has happened to Tesla stock, as you have noted over this period where a long while ago, seems like a long while ago anyway, you had Elon Musk saying, our stock price is too high in my opinion and the stock has accelerated at least three times since that point i mean there was a stock split and so on but anyway they they show this example they show other examples where there's failure they give you the numbers as well they give you the statistics of how crazy things are so let's get into it i just wanted to note these uh, points right here before we move in investors double down on stocks pushing margin debt to record and that's of course always going to be a problem because that shows you the amount of speculation call it what you want that is real speculation it's not somebody buying amazon stock because they believe okay this is the future and so on not at all chasing bigger gains some have exposed themselves to potentially devastating losses through riskier plays such as concentrated positions and trading options for the vast majority of these people typically would be somebody who has experience who has seen the ups and downs who does it professionally and now individuals they watch a couple videos and they think they know what they're doing and surely if the market continues in one direction hey you're good but as soon as it goes on the flip side you've got a big problem Bruce Burnworth used to clip coupons and look for deals before his investment in Tesla made him a millionaire. He is part of a widening class of what they describe as an affluent Americans who are doubling or even tripling down on this year's high-flying stock market. The S&P 500 has soared 66% since bottoming in March, while dozens of individual stocks like Tesla have surged even higher. This is funny because you see that their accounts have been been increasing their portfolio is looking better but until you realize those gains there hasn't been any that's the absolute fact nobody wants to acknowledge that but anyway this is important as you see these examples coming in where people are doing very very well their money has been expanding in their portfolios and so they decide for whatever reason to 
go into riskier plays, as they mentioned right here, again, through concentrated positions, trading options, and leveraged ETFs. Others are borrowing against their investment portfolios, pushing margin debt balances, margin balances to the first record in more than two years to buy even more stock. Right down here, investors borrowing against their securities reached a record $722 billion last month. It's crazy. This is what they're doing, and nobody seems to be worried about it. That's what's truly worrisome to me. A strong indicator of stock market euphoria flashed red last month. Investors borrowed a record $722 billion against their investment portfolios through November, and that's topping the previous high of $668 billion from May 2018. The milestone is an ominous one for the stock market. Margin debt records tend to precede bouts of volatility as seen in 2000 and 2008, but nobody seems to care at this point because why? This time is different. They're talking about one particular individual who lost big time. And right here, Joe Phoenix crash came in 2018. He had bet heavily against the prospect of volatility resurfacing, resurfacing in the market, amassing more than $1 million using exchange traded products that delivered the inverse of the VIX. The product amplified daily moves by three times and he made a risky bet even riskier by using margin debt. A spike in volatility in February 2018 wiped out a significant chunk of his gains, knocking his holding into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then what did he do? He simply went through trading leverage ETFs once again. All right, don't worry about it though. Everything's going to be just fine. You may have seen this in the news, but check this out. A $280 billion unicorn just had its legs broken. Ant's story can no longer be the fairy tale investors believed in. Ant Group, this company here, they went to do the IPO. The government shut it down. They said, no, 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 no. We're going to start investigating you. We're going to go in, scrutinize it, and so on. And basically, now the newest information I saw was that they can only go back to their whole payment system that they had before. They can't basically become a big bank and um, you know be worth billions and billions and billions as they are and were seen to grow. It's just showing you that anything can change. These IPOs, they're coming out screaming hot. And then who knows what's even this, this business is even about. When Uber and Lyft came out, they opened up their books and saw that this really isn't a good business model, it seems, at least up to this point, because the amount of money that's being burned on a monthly basis is unsustainable long term. But people just believe that you don't have to worry about these things anymore. And to me, that's foolish. And anything no matter how big this would have been the biggest ipo no matter how big it is it can fall in 12 months to october foreigners net purchased 262 billion dollars in u.s equities another new record so what we have here is a lot of money flowing in from every single angle domestically foreign central banks and so on a record high in moderate overvaluation. You're looking at the top at the S&P 500 and then below percentage of the members with a PE greater than 25. That's the red line. And as you can see, this has moved into a range it has never been before. This chart goes back to 1979. We've never seen anything like this. Sure, in 2000, we had a huge problem. 2001, where there's so many many where there were so many of these different companies that were going just parabolic and you know it's hard when you look at averages and so on because it kind of skews everything and things have certainly changed in 20 years it doesn't matter you know that there are so many different indicators that are completely off the charts s p 500 valuations showing you what has happened and nothing absolutely nothing right now makes sense look at the historical percentile if you can't read that font just note that all of these all of these here are above 90 percent many of them are 100 percent 
It just shows you how exaggerated this is right now today. Whether we're looking at median EV to sales, US total market cap to GDP, median price to sales, and it just goes down and down and down and down and down. And we're looking at these extremes, these absolute extremes today, but somehow it's as if nobody, most people I should say, don't believe that this is unjustified. They actually do believe that these prices, these valuations should be there and should continue to go higher. I don't know. You tell me. But I wanted to give you some information that may be valuable to you. This comes from Real Investment Advice, not my advice, okay? I'm reading Real Investment Advice. They have been very, very on point with what they have said. They do invest. They are there in the markets daily. They know what's going on, and they've been very accurate based on what I have seen. With the Santa Claus rally officially kicking off next week, we are maintaining our long bias with reduced hedges at the moment during the past week we added to our energy exposure on the recent pullback and some of our momentum trades we took profits in previously we are maintaining our s p index position through next week once we get into january depending on the state of the stimulus bill now passed government shutdown and the market levels we will begin reducing risk and hedging portfolios accordingly all right essentially saying it's too optimistic this is something that the federal reserve can't fix they're going crazy right now the fundamentals mean nothing and so they want to reduce positions they're not selling their portfolios off entirely they are not going all the way out all i'm trying to show you here is that when you look at the fundamentals things are off when you look at certain indicators things are off and on a short-term basis things are a little too hot these two charts i'll show you right now are from wolf street and you can see the railroad index look at the market cap of these companies they've gone higher and higher and higher right what has happened though with the actual jobs the big plunge in railroad jobs this is from 2016 up until november 2020 so you fire people and your stock goes higher. I've seen this too many times. And unfortunately, this is the case over and over. Why in the world does your increase in profitability have to come from kicking people to the curb? I just don't know. This article here was talking about the new world of retail, essentially saying that no longer are people necessarily coming into the stores, they're buying things here, it's a traditional way of doing business. No, now people are doing the curbside pickup, they're shopping online, things are changing, people are working in the warehouses versus necessarily getting a job at a, a typical, typical retail place and so on. This is likely a window into the new world of retail what was done out of necessity is likely to become an annual online shopping tradition for future holidays they're talking about the statistics of increasing applications for e-commerce roles delivery drivers warehouse workers order pickers in the u.s and a 45 percent jump in the uk that's 120 percent in the united states showing you that things have really really changed in a short period of time they give you certain examples these individuals who went for one thing but now they're you know doing something completely different simply because this is the way that the world has been working. They want employment and this is what's been happening. Quick update, not surprising to you, I know, but the state population growth in 2020, you could look at Texas on the top of that list. Underneath that, you have Florida, and then you've got Arizona. At the very bottom here, we are looking at New York and Illinois and California, all seeing negative population growth. Not really uh, something that would surprise any of my viewers, I know that. Did you get a bailout by chance at any point? Were you just handed you know, millions of dollars? Probably not, but the Penguins, the hockey team, valued at $650 million, received nearly $5 million in their PPP loans. As you know, not all of these here need to be paid back. Depends on the situation. There's a lot of fine print and so on. But apparently, 
uh, there's a lot of companies here who have been given money and who knows what's going on with all the details nobody knows but quite frankly the average person never gets the benefits and then we have this example right here out of the Wall Street Journal talking about oil prices. And then they mention that Texas billionaires Dan and Ferris Wilkes got a $35 million relief loan to help one of their fracking companies stay afloat. At the same time, they were on a buying spree in the country's oil patch. This is what happens all the time when you have certain people that are absolutely struggling at the bottom and others who are able to utilize the system in a way that the average person simply cannot the system is built like this intentionally and we will see who those with the real strength are in the next cycle that's all for this video if you found it informative hit that thumbs up button when you do you're supporting me i want to thank you for that simply by clicking a button on your screen you help to support the creator thank you for that if you want to learn about e-commerce you want to understand everything that there is related to it uh, as it relates to amazon but also you know in e-commerce in general actually this is so important i've given it away for free it's my course the amazon gps.com the financial system it's complex it's very difficult intentionally to keep you from knowing the truth but i've broken it down right here in these two books you definitely want to check it out click on the link in the description but if you want the audiobook you can get that at themoneygps.com hold on wait a second have you seen this video if not highly highly recommend checking it out you can click on it and i'll see you there